Today we are going to talk about the motion of a single particle in a fluid. We have two objectives for this video. One is to understand the forces resisting the motion of a particle and how we model these forces, and two, to provide the methods for estimating the steady state velocity of the particle relative to the fluid. We will start by talking about the forces that are acting on a single particle. One of these forces is the drag force. We model the drag force to resist creeping motion. Creeping motion is when the particle is moving very slowly relative to the fluid. The drag force is defined between a particle that is a rigid sphere and a fluid of infinite extent. The drag force has two components, a pressure drag force and a shear drag force. These components are combined to form an expression for the total drag force. In this equation, the total drag force resisting motion is Fd. X is the diameter of a rigid sphere mu is the viscosity of the fluid, and u is the relative velocity. This equation is known as Stokes' Law. Stokes' Law is used to describe how drag affects a particle of a certain range of Reynolds numbers. For a single particle, the Reynolds number can be modeled by this equation. In this equation, x is the diameter of a rigid sphere, u is the relative velocity, rho is the density of the fluid, and mu is the viscosity of the fluid. This Reynolds number is used to define three regions of particle motion. The three regions are Stokes, Newton's, and Intermediate. Stokes' law holds for particles that have a Reynolds number less than 0 0.3. Newton's law holds for Reynolds numbers that are greater than 500 and less than 2 times 10 to the fifth. The intermediate zone is just the zone between Stokes and Newton's. So that's from 0 0.3 to 500. A drag coefficient can also be defined for each region. For Stokes, the drag coefficient is equal to 24 over the Reynolds number for the particle. For Newton's law, the drag coefficient is about 0 0.44. For the intermediate region, there is an equation which is a correlation based off of experimental data. Experimental data is used because there are no laws that can accurately describe this region. This graph shows the relationship between the drag coefficient and the Reynolds number. This graph also shows the three regions of single particle motion. The two other forces affecting a single particle in a fluid are gravity and buoyancy. This equation shows how the three forces act on the particle. When all of these forces are balanced, the acceleration is zero, and the particle has reached terminal velocity. The drag coefficient can be modeled under terminal velocity conditions with this equation. This equation can be solved under Stokes and Newton conditions. For Stokes, recall that the drag coefficient is 24 over the Reynolds number. When you plug in the drag coefficient and solve for the terminal velocity, you get this equation. For Newton's, recall that the drag coefficient is approximately 0.44. When you plug in the drag coefficient and solve for the terminal velocity, you get this equation.
These equations describe how a particle falls through a fluid. Let's recall what we learned. In summary, we learned that the three forces acting on a particle are gravity, buoyancy, and drag force. We learned how to model drag force and then use this to determine the terminal velocity of a particle in a fluid.